Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, November 24, question paper 4-2. This is the third video, and we are going to discuss question 9 and question 10. In this video, we are only going to discuss question 9 and 10, which were left from the previous videos. The red uh, ruffled lemur, Veratia rubra, is a mammal found only in the rainforest of the Mazeola region in northeast Madagascar. Figure 9.1 shows a red ruffled lemur. The International Union of uh, Conservation for Nature, IUC, and Red List of Threatened Species states that the red ruffled lemur is critically endangered. Suggest why the red ruffled lemur has become critically endangered. Well, it's loss of habitat. It's usually some points which you can write in every question. A loss of habitat, maybe they're hunted or poaching because of increased predation. Then there's a climate change, then there's competition for food, and there's a new disease or there is an illegal pet or fur trade, which is uh, resulting in a lot of them being uh, killed or hunted or poached. So any three out of these, loss of habitat, hunted, poaching, climate change, competition for food, new disease, illegal fur trade. Then coming to the B part of the question, many zoos around the world operate captive breeding programs for the red ruffled lemur. Figure 9.2 shows the numbers of captive born red ruffled lemurs in North American zoos from 1970 to 2020, number of captive born. So 1970, there were very few, then 1980, they've gone up to about 30 or 25 more 30, then 1990, they've gone up to nearly 175, and then 2000, they've gone up to again 175. And then in 2010, they've gone a little more than 175, and uh, then again they have come down in 2020. So this is the number of captive born red ruffled lemurs, and this is the year that is being shown. Now they say describe the results shown in figure 9.2. So there's a large increase from 1980 to 1990. You can see this large increase from 1980 to 1990. So large increase from 1980 to 1990, then remains constant plateaus, remains constant or slight changes or slightly fluctuates. You can use these words, then you use the data code. Like in 1970, there were five, and then in 1980, there were 32 or 33, you can say. Then in 1990, there were 175, and then in 2000, they were again 175. So any of these you could have mentioned in 2010, they were 184. And then in 2020, they were 170. So any of these data codes, you have to just give me two numbers and two years. So in 1980 and 1990, what were the numbers? Or in 1990 or 2000. So two numbers and two years. So always you give me two, two things on the x-axis and the corresponding thing on the y-axis. So always remember in the data code, you give me two things on the x-axis and the corresponding two figures on the y-axis. So steep increase from 80 to 90, plateaus or remains constant after that, and then a data code. Captive breeding programs for endangered animals such as the red ruffled lemur can vary in their success rate, suggest so problems that may affect the success of captive breeding programs of mammals like the red ruffled lemur. Yes, stress in captivity, reproductive cycles disrupted, uh, may reject the chosen mate or do not have correct courtship behavior, lack of suitable mates, then enclosure too small, it's not the natural environment, then it's very expensive, and there can be inbreeding depression or inbreeding can cause uh, genetic things which doesn't make them uh, live or they're not, uh, they're prematurely die. So premature births take place. So that is the reason why captive breeding is not much of a success story. So stress in captivity, reproductive cycle disrupted, may reject the mate, or you can say refuse to breed or do not have the correct courtship behavior. Then lack of suitable mates, there are not many mates around, there are not many males around, or there are not many females around. Enclosure is too small or maybe not the natural environment, then it's very expensive to breed them in captivity. So all these points, any of three of these, you got your three marks. And the last part of the question is occasionally wild caught red ruffled lemurs are introduced into captive breeding programs. Suggest why this is done. Because it increases the genetic diversity or the heterozygosity it might result in hybrid vigor. And it reduces inbreeding depression or homozygosity. 
So increases genetic, there's only one mark. So increases genetic diversity or increases hybrid vigor, or you can say increases the gene pool, or or you can say reduces inbreeding, depression, and homozygosity. And, uh, now we come to the last question, which is question number 10A. Blood glucose concentration is maintained around a set point by homeostasis. Explain the principle of homeostasis. Very direct question. Change in a factor or a stimulus detected by a receptor. Now this information goes to the brain or you can say the central nervous system, then impulses or hormones are sent to the effector, which can be a muscle or a gland. And then the effector or the muscle or the gland carries out a response and the factor returns to the set point or to the normal thing. A negative feedback, you can talk about that, you can talk about cell signaling, four marks for this. So principles of homeostasis. So there's a change in the factor, information goes to the brain, brain sends impulses or results in hormones being produced, and that results in the effector, which could be a muscle or gland to carry out a response, and the factor returns to its normal set point, and this is called negative feedback. So any four of these points, the word negative feedback is also one way we explain homeostasis, change in a factor detected by a receptor. You enter this room, this room is very hot, detected by temperature receptors in the skin. Information goes to the brain, brain sends impulses to the sweat glands, produce sweat, and there is going to be vasodilation in the skin arteries and the arterioles, so more heat is lost. So, I mean, similarly, I'm just giving an example of it, but then we weren't asked to give you an example. We were asked what are the principles of homeostasis. So, CNS informed impulses to muscles or glands. Effectors carry out the response. Factor returns to set point or normal. Now, coming on to the B part of the question, glycogen phosphorylase catalyzes the conversion of glycogen to glucose in liver cells. The production of glycogen phosphorylase is coded for the by gene PYGL. A mutation in PYGL leads to a condition called glycogen storage disease type 6, GSDV, GSD6, in which glycogen is not broken down efficiently. Suggest and explain why cell signaling by glucagon is likely to be affected in the liver cells of a person with GSD6. You see, you've got to remember is that what, how did glucagon act? So glucagon binds to receptors, adrenal cyclase stimulated or G protein activated. So no glycogen phosphorylase produced, which will result, which is reason, reason why change in the tertiary structure or the active site. So no glycogen converted to glucose. You see, you have to understand is how was glycogen converted to glucose? It was the effect of glucagon because it used to bind to receptors and then that used to result in the G protein being activated and the CMP formed. Now, all that is not going to take place. So less glycogen phosphorylase produced, or you can say non-functioning glycogen phosphorylase produced. Why? Because there's a change in the tertiary structure or the active site and less of the glycogen converted to glucose. So any of these two points, which I've given you in the beginning, it is uh, anything about the cell signaling. So you could give me any two details. Glucagon binds to receptor, adrenal cyclase simulated, or you could have been saying G protein activated, or you could have said CAMP formed, or you could have said protein kinase A activated or enzyme cascade. Now, even if you give me all those points, I could only give you two marks for this. And then what will all this result in? It will be less glycogen phosphorylase produced. Why? Because there's a change in the tertiary structure because a mutation has taken place. So a change in the tertiary structure has occurred. So less glycogen converted to glucose. Glycogen synthase catalyzes the conversion of glucose to glycogen in liver cells. The production of glycogen synthase is coded for the gene GYS2. A mutation in GYS2 leads to a condition called glycogen storage disease, type 0 GSDO, 0 in which glycogen is not formed efficiently. Suggest what the consequence would be if a person with GSD0 has a meal rich in glucose. There's going to be a lot of problems. Less uh, functioning of glycogen synthase. So there's going to be an increase in blood glucose concentration following this meal. So glucose will be excreted in the urine. There will be more lipid synthesis, inhibits the release of glucagon. This will affect the blood water potential resulting in dehydration and thirst or tiredness 
or coma or even affects the blood pressure. Why? Because you see glycogen is not being stored. These were called glycogen storage disease in which glycogen is not formed efficiently. So if glycogen is not formed, then that glucose is being going to be converted into lipids. So that's going to be more lipid synthesis. So, and why would there be inhibits the release of glucagon? Why? Because the glucose will be too much in the blood all the time because the glucose is not being converted to glycogen. So glucagon will not be released. Glucagon is only released when your glucose is converted to glycogen and stored and the glucose level falls and that's when glucagon is released. So uh, how do you word this? Less glycogen synthase produced high blood glucose concentration following the meal. So glucose excreted in the urine, more lipid synthesis because the glucose is going to be converted, not way, it's not only stored in the liver as glycogen, so it's going to be converted to fat. And this will inhibit because there's going to be too much glucose all the time in the blood. So it's going to inhibit the release of glucagon. And too much glucose means the person is going to be dehydrated, is going to feel thirsty all the time. So all that, all those effects will result. It could be tiredness, could be coma. It could affect the blood pressure. So these were all the, and you have to give me three out of these to get your three out of three. There were three marks for this part of the question. That completes this paper. Thank you very much.